Between every two pine trees, there is a door leading to a new way of life. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In the late 1800s, John Muir began exploring America's vast, untapped wilderness. In his biography, it is stated that he was overwhelmed by the landscape, scrambling down steep cliff faces to get a closer look at the waterfalls, whooping and howling at the vistas, jumping tirelessly from flower to flower. He explored the vast lands of the interior until his 40s when he fell in love with and married Louisa Strenzel, whose father owned a 2,600-acre fruit orchard in San Francisco's Bay Area. In 1890, he partnered with his father-in-law and went to work at the orchard, where he was gifted a large, Italianate home which had been built in 1883. The 14-room house boasted a symmetrical facade and was graced by large bay windows on either side of a stretch hexagonal veranda. Following the coins to the frieze, bullseye windows were neatly placed between corbels, and crowning the structure, a cupola offers views beyond the orchard, past the native grasslands, and into the native oak woodlands. As we explore John's slice of paradise, we will see a mix of new and old photos to more accurately paint a picture of what life was like for the mirrors. Entering the home, we arrive in the stair hall, where a Greek Revival-style staircase is capped by a tapered, octagonal mill post. Though the wallpaper has been removed over the years, the warm wood tones invite us in to explore further. To one side, we will find the West Parlor serving as a music room. The marble fireplace, set below a gilded mirror and paired with a striking, red damask wallpaper, creates a lively ambiance. And in the center of the room, a crystal chandelier is suspended from an ornate plaster medallion and centered on a bay window trimmed near the top with corbels supporting arching millwork. From here we can turn around and make our way through the pocket doors to find the library. The library is clad in floor-to-ceiling wood paneling with freestanding glass-paned bookcases. Back towards the front of the house, we will find the east parlor, considerably more homey, with a large brick hearth offering a more humble retreat from the other formal rooms. Next, we will see the study, also referred to as John Scribbleden, where he reflected on his time in nature. Here he wrote hundreds of newspaper and magazine articles, along with letters and books, calling on the powers that be to preserve the vast wilderness. His arguments became so refined and his logic so sound that his writings were used as a guide for founding the National Park Service, earning John the title of the father of the national parks. It is also in this house that he founded the Sierra Club, which today has chapters in each of the 50 states. Continuing along, we will find the bedrooms, staged with period-accurate furniture and textiles. And on each of the beds, we can see the clothing that John and his wife would have worn in their house. While the third floor remains unfinished, we can take a peek at the furniture sitting in storage and imagine what this room could have become. Further up, resting in the cupola's rafters, a bell could ring out over the land to signal the start or end of a day's work. John lived out the rest of his life in this house, passing away in 1914. Just two years later, and based on his arguments for conservation, the National Park Service was born to preserve and protect the wilderness for the enjoyment of future generations. Thanks to him, we can enjoy these natural wonders with the assurance that they will still be around for the next generation. Today, the John Muir National Historic Site, which includes the house and surrounding landscape, is open to the public to explore. Did you have a favorite room? Or maybe you would rather tell me about your favorite national park or nature reserve. Either way, let me know about it down below in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.